Good morning, everybody. Here's another video related to uh, JSON and web services. Okay, this is the exciting part, I believe. In the last two videos, what we've done is that we call the web service and then we uh, consume the data and then we printed out the data. But this is not how usually it works. What you need to do, you need to do something like this, for example. You get the data and display it. So if you run this, this is what we're going to do today, okay? This is what's going to happen, basically. What we have is that this data that you saw is actually coming from the web service. Instead of printing it out on the console like this, we wanted to actually show it in a table. So the same information, but now it's presented to the user. And when you click on this, it'll show you more detail regarding that. Now, in this video, I'm not going to do this part, the imaging part, but we're going to see how we can download the data and display it in a table of view. All right, now, if you've been following my videos, this should be very familiar to you. And the reason it is because in video 21, number 21 is a table view controller part five. We've done that, okay? And I'll show you what we've done earlier. So if we go to the window, and this is, uh, let's see, go to window and open the previous one that you guys have, okay? Which is this one, start. So we did the same thing, but instead of loading the data, it used to come from here. As loading the data from a web service, we actually hard-coded these classes. And now we have a class called store. So if you forgot what we've done, maybe I recommend you go back and watch this video instead of, instead of starting another one, okay, to make things easier. So we have a store. This store has the attributes that, uh, that pretty much matches what we have in the web service, okay? So that is done, and we have a table view that already take care of loading the data into a table view, okay? All right, and there is a part that when you click on it, it shows you the details, so this is done. So why would we reinvent the wheel again? And we have an array that stores all the information. So rather than starting from scratch, we can use the code that we've done yesterday and add it to this uh, project, all right? Now, to make it easy on you, I've created this project. I will share it in Dropbox, and the address of this will be listed in the tutorial, and here is the address too, okay? So you can copy this address, and then you can download the file, but I will post it in the YouTube, on the video description too. All right, so give you some time to download it, and now we should be able to get ready. So after you download the project, open the project, and then this is, the, this is well, you should have something similar to what you see in here. All right, so let's review what we've done last time. Okay, so if I go look at that JSON view parsing, JSON parsing, we've created two functions, right? One function that download the data, and one function extract the data out, okay? So I can just simply, this is probably the easiest way, you could have done it in other ways, you can create another class and call public methods and then it'll give you the data back. That's up to you how you wanna do it, but this is for now, as a starting, this would be the easiest way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy these two functions that we've created because we they're working, right? And then command copy. And then close this project, don't need it anymore. And go to the start project that you downloaded. And what we're gonna do is that we're gonna add it to the end. Okay, make sure you copy it in the right spot. So at the end of this, prepare for segue. Okay, so that's all I have to do. Now, I have the code that download the data and I have the code that extract the data out. What is left is that we need to, instead of all of this, okay, we need to delete all of this, okay? Or you can comment it out in case you want to look at it back later, look at it later on. And then we need to execute the method that actually call, download the data, which is remember, which is self.load records, okay? So the first thing happens, it calls this method which we copied it, and then extract the data. 
once the data is received, it will call this to pass it out, okay? So let's test it out, make sure it works. Now, if we look at the output, nothing in the array yet, but I got the same data I used to get before, so I'm okay. All right, so we'll do the next step. Now, before I go farther, do you see these? Icon 1, Icon 2, Icon 3, I copy them into the project. Typically, you don't do that. Typically, you will actually download images from the server too. But for, for this video, we're not gonna do that. I will post another video to show you how we download the data and put them into the table view. Okay, so we're ready. What's the next step? The next step is that instead of, remember we used to do this here? Instead of doing, it, doing this here now, I need to do it when we parse out the data. So I have three records. Every record, what I need to do is I create an object, do something with that object, set the properties of that object, and then add it to the array just like that. We have an array, the array called store list. All right, so let's go to that last method that we just copied or function. Here it is. All right, here is my array. So I'm gonna define a variable, variable store. And this is, the type of this is the store class. You see that? All right. Okay, now this is my array. I'm just gonna write some comment. We're gonna, we will, we loop through all the records and every time we create an object of stores of kind of okay and then add it to the array of stores which is called or store list we call the store list right store list okay which is this array on top okay store list okay so that's the first step we need to create the object so i can say store equal to store and then with no parameters so we're just using the default initializer all right then what happens <coughs> oh sorry i did it in the wrong spot we do it in the first at the first thing at the beginning of the array every time you see an object okay so that's the first step Okay, this part is actually getting the value. So what you need to do, you get these values, you get these values and set the properties of the store. Instead of printing it out, you just simply set these properties. Now I don't have a property called store ID in the class. Remember, we don't have, a, we have a store name, okay? Now you could add it if you want to, okay, but I didn't do it. So what we need to do is that I have a store name here. So instead of this, what do you do here? You just say, you can, you can comment it out and then do what you say store dot store name that comes from the class equal to the store name value that we got from JSON data, which is store name, okay? Done with that. Now we have a few other properties, you see, oops. A few other property, command copy, and then command V, and then here we have what? Instead of store name, let's take a look at the data. What else do we have? We have store icon, right? So I'm going to say store icon, 
that give me the image, okay? And you can say, you can call it whatever, that's here. Just to be consistent, you call it store icon, and then here you say store icon, and then you set the image of the store to the store icon, right? So store uh, image name, okay? So that will give me one of those, okay? And the, let's add more, right? What else do we have? We have the description, right? Store description. So I can copy this again, command copy, and do get this course, store description. All right, store description. Make sure these field names are the same values are here, right? And then you do here, store description. Now, you can do the rest, but you get the point. Now, you have latitude and longitude. You get the point. So you have a few other things that you need to worry about. Okay, but this is the process. Okay, at the end, this is the end of the loop. Okay, so let me just hide this out. So here's my, I got my values. In the loop, I created my object, got the values, set the values to the object, and then finally, what do I do? I say, store list, <coughs> store list, that's the array. We will add the record that we just created to the store list, and this is how you add it as like we did before. And the name of the object is store. Okay, so that is it for getting the records, creating the objects, and putting them into array of objects. So this is the end of the array. As you get out, after you process all the records, what you need to do is that you need to tell the the, uh, the table view that we have is that we've done, please load the data again into the table view. And here we have, we can't do just simply, because we have a table view, you can't say self.tableView.reload data. Okay. What this does, this method, does is that it actually invoke reloading the data to the table view so it will execute all those functions related to the table view get the number of records and then set the values and set the uh, all this stuff here get the number of records and set the sections and then get all those values and populate them in the table all right and the, i'll show you why it wouldn't work if you do this if you go down what happens, this happening, this, this is asynchronous move, meaning uh, operation. That means when it's done, it goes and do something in the background. Well, your user interface is running on the main queue. So what you need to do is that you want to do this in the main queue. And the way you do it, you just say, NS operation, okay. Operation queue dot main queue. We need to add a task. We need to add an operation. Add operation. There's something called add operation with block. You see that? Okay. What this allow me to do? It allow me run some code on the main operation, on the main queue. So now it should work. So if you do this. It should work, okay? And this is critical. Without this, your table view will not be updated. You got the data, but the table view will not be updated, okay? So now let's test it and see what happens. It should work. Okay, it's taking time. Do you see that? Let me run it again. And I got the data, and I populated the data. When you click on this, it shows you more detail. So great, it works. Now, what you can do, of course, this is a simple example, but what you need to do, you need to do a few more things to make it up 
worthy of publishing. I mean, let me just show you a few things. First of all, you want to make sure this could be delayed. So maybe you could put an activity indicator here saying that, you know, that spinner shows that you're downloading the data. And if you don't get a record, maybe you need to inform the user there is no record or if there is no, if there's a problem with the connection to the server, you need to mention that. Or if there's no Wi-Fi, you need to also mention that. Okay, but this gets you uh, most of the way. The rest of it is just a little bit of tweaking of your code and it will work, all right? So that is it. In the next video, hopefully what I'll do is that I'll show you how we download the images instead of these images being, uh, being, uh, being shown here from the code, the app. We will download them from a server and then we'll display them in here. All right. I hope to see you on the next video.